Now then, welcome back to Bucket Craft. Ah, look at it. Look at it. Eat it up. Look at that. Look at that. I got a bucket. Welcome back to Terra Firma Punk, the Survivor Series, people. Thank you for sticking around this long. I got a bucket. I got a bucket. It's amazing. I've been waiting all my life, it seems, for this moment. This magical bucket. And not only did I get one bucket, but after getting the one bucket, almost like immediately while I was still killing the mobs that gave me the first bucket, I got a second bucket. Yes, I got two buckets in the space of like a minute. Awesome. And then for 15 minutes after that, I didn't get another bucket. <laughs> It's like, waited, how many episodes are we on now? On episode 19? Episode 19? And I've finally got a bucket off one of them bucket zombies. Um, so now we can proceed. The bucket is like the crucial key ingredient in this pack to be able to move on to other mods. Um, as you can see down here, let's 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 go through things. Excitement of getting the bucket over and done with. I want to talk about this farmstead because at the minute, let me uh, let me show you this. We are in late spring. I've been here a whole season, nearly a whole calendar season, and I've been experimenting with the farms and stuff. And there's a few little bits and pieces that I want to let you know. A few little bits and pieces that I want to talk about. Um, firstly, I've had a harvest, and I put the harvest in the vanilla chest that I stole from uh, a ruins that I encountered recently, uh, like a few episodes ago, and there is zero decay on these items that are in this, um, thing. That's, that's zero decay because I took it out to combine it, and, yeah, there's no decay on anything except for the stuff that I've taken out. Now, I'm going to take something out. Just a second. Let's take... Let's take these tomatoes, for example. I'm going to take these tomatoes out. And I'm going to look at them. And look at that decay rising. It rose very quickly to 1.5%. So while storing the items in here alleviates all the decay, there's kind of some kind of uh, timestamp on it. Which means that... I end up with decay on it, even though I haven't allowed it to receive any decay in the meantime. So Terra Firma Craft is very, very clever. So while this is perfect for me just to quickly do the farming, drop them all into one chest, so that they're not going to decay before I can start pickling them and putting them in vinegar and stuff like that, and I can potentially leave them here for a long time uh, and keep them binding them up and sorting them out, it's not an ideal solution. It's not an ideal solution. I uh, spoke to One Wolf about the seller's add-on, and a viewer's comment in the description, um, an awesome guy, set us a little bit of a note saying that the next version of the seller's mod is fixed, and it's something to do with Railcraft Air. So I'm planning on building a seller from the seller's mod uh, in the next update. And I'm planning on sort of digging down here somewhere and preparing a food cellar from this food storage area. Uh, I did a little bit more work over here as well. A few more little principles that I didn't know when I started out Terra Firma Craft. And I know now from experiencing it and also getting a few hints and tips. Not only in the comments but from One Wolf himself. Um, I am seriously thinking how to utilize this knowledge right uh, once you get up to the expert level which you find in here once you get to the expert level in agriculture and all that is is just by breaking crops you can go out into the wild and just break crops until you eventually level up and then you can use a metal hoe uh, i tried using a stone hoe a few episodes ago and it doesn't work but a metal hoe and you have a look to see what the ingredients the nutrients are in the soil of fertile land okay and then you let the land um, be fallow for a while and overgrow with grass. And that resets it all back to like normal default. So, for example, um, let us take this piece of dirt here. 
okay? This piece of farmland here has currently got almost all of its C nutrient taken out. A, B, C. All of its C nutrient taken out, okay? So let's break it. And it will disappear. Farmland always disappears. That's the first thing, right? Then we'll take a bit of dirt. Well, it's currently grass, but we'll take a bit of dirt. And we'll place it down. And we'll hoe it. And it, when you place dirt and hoe it, it becomes farmland with no nutrients whatsoever. Okay? And then, of course, when I break it, it's going to break up completely again and disappear because it was farmland. So let's take another piece of far, uh, uh, dirt that I placed and place it again. Okay. So this piece of dirt here, I'm going to place it again. And this time I'm going to leave it until the grass grows onto it. And this is an important part of my farming technique, so I hope it grows pretty fast. Uh, I'm allowing this grass to grow across into these middle sections. I've now got it so that each middle section has got grass on it. I've done this sort of like uh, leaving a little pathway for the dirt to turn into grass and placed a load more dirt around the place. Um, we might, I may as well quickly show you over here. That piece we'll come back to if we get a chance, right? All of this dirt I've placed... All of this dirt underneath the fences I've placed and I've allowed the grass to grow from around the natural areas like over there. Look, you can see it's growing off that island coming across this way and it's growing that way. It slowly but surely grows. If I hoe this land now, it has full standard nutrients. So in theory, I can use the nutrients up in an area. So this is using up uh, B nutrient at the minute. This is using up B nutrient. Uh, this is using up A and C nutrient because I've currently got planted uh, maize which is using up A and previously I had something that was using up C. So uh, as you can see the C is the lowest but now the maize will be taking out the A nutrient. I hope that's all makes sense. It may be over complicated for some of you that are just watching to see what I get up to in Terra Firma Punk. But I'm guessing that a lot of you are either... Oh, I've just eaten my... Oh, no, it is. There it is. I've just eaten my ceramic jug because I did have two ceramic jugs on me again. I eat ceramic jugs like there's no tomorrow. Have you noticed I'm not so scared out here? Look, I'm sort of like hanging around waiting for something to come and get me. I've got an opening there and I've got an opening over here. I did fence up this area, but I'm not that too worried about mobs coming now. They don't seem to be spawning very few and far around me. There's there's something over there you could just about make it out. It looks like a skeleton with uh, some sort of javelin who's going to come over and get me in a bit. Uh, but nothing spawns really close to me, so I'm fairly safe. Uh, this area here, I'm going to do something very similar today with what I've done over here. Uh, I've done all the prep work to get the grass growing. Uh, basically flattened the land out to let the fresh water um, become infinite water sources all around. So that I can do this pattern thing again. This kind of design. Uh, I think that's cool design. Oh, here we go. This is done now. So this piece of dirt that we just placed. Hoe it. And now it's got all its nutrients back. Didn't take long for the grass to travel over, did it? Didn't take long at all. And I'm falling in holes because I've made holes in the ground. So, yeah, you can use all of the farmland up and use its all its nutrients and all that kind of stuff, and then you just have to uh, put a fresh piece of dirt down. Hey, hi, dude. I didn't see you over there. Charlie Baitelor. Yeah, oh, I didn't see you over there. Um, you can use all of the soil's nutrients and then just replace the farmland with fresh soil, let the grass grow over it, hoe it, and it's all nutrient-friendly again. And in the, the real world, that would be leaving the field fallow, right? So I've sectioned all these off into 4x4s because then the water sources can reach from all sorts of different directions. And yeah, it's just, I like the design of it after a while. And this one, we're going to plant all of the uh, grain crops. I'm going to plant a field of grain crops over here. But I need it to be an irrigated field, so that's why we've got it uh, fully... Uh, stocked up with infinite water sources right now. Let's have a quick sleep. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, the four lives. Yes, yes, yes. Currently have four lives because I lost a life a while back. Uh, we're going to deal with that first, actually, before we come back and get the dirt. Uh-huh. You can burn up over there. Everything will burn up for a bit. Let's see. 
And I, I'm tending to start doing a little jump down here. Now I've got water down here to catch me. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like this little section there. And up. <sighs> da, 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 da. Going down to the mine area. Uh, where we've got the mob farm. Where I got these two beautiful buckets. Uh, two buckets at once. I also got some other cool stuff down here as well. Which I, well, I'm happy to have it. But I wasn't as amazed as getting the bucket because now I've got a bucket I've got all sorts of things available to me I uh, I lit it back up when I left so that I could unlight it when I want I've also got an odd piece of dirt there because I had to break a block and replace it earlier um, but yeah the, the mob spawner does occasionally spawn over the backside there we go yeah there's uh, Johnson Cruzy has spawned and fallen down into that little water trough there it's got a water bucket because I used the bucket that I got to place a water source. Let's go down and say hello to this guy, Charlie. Uh, this has been adapted slightly. I've had to break blocks and replace blocks. And of course, the smooth basalt is the best for placing. Uh, but now I've got a water stream for this group of guys in here. So I can just smack them about a bit and kill them off. And then I get their bits and pieces. Yeah, have it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, mo, 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 mo. Yeah. And uh, because the water stream's facing towards me, the drops float towards me so I can pick them up. That's the ideal there behind it all. Um, we got the quarter hearts, which I can get myself another heart now to replace the one that the mob farm took from me. And also, yeah, like this chest plate. It's pretty awesome as a chest plate. Um, I've not got the ability to make them yet because it's black bronze, same as the sword. So I'm pretty pretty OP while I've got it, but it's pretty awesome having it. And we, I've shown you the other bits and pieces. I've killed another couple of witches since. They don't seem to be as frequent as I'd like. Um, but we've got things like... Uh, oh, there's another bucket zombie in here now. I see if I can get another bucket on camera. Come on. Gimme, 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 gimme. There's a Fred the zombie. There's a red cap zombie, red cap in there as well. Red cap pirate. They give coal away, which is nice. Nice to have. And you. Red cap raven hunter. I keep getting ravens stuck down here as well. You can hear the raven. You get loads of ravens and raven feathers from the twilight forest. I don't know that the raven's feathers has any particular use in this pack. Uh, but it does always have a use in the twilight forest. I don't think I can go to any other dimension from here though. So it may be fairly useless to me. Oh, look, I've got a black bronze knife there as well. See, little things like that just keep popping out. Some random durabilities on them as well. They're not always bad durabilities. I mean, this one was near enough perfect. Um, I've had a few other bits and pieces, which is cool as well. But that's cool. A black bronze knife now. That's cool. Right click on top of non-soil block to create a meal preparation area. Yeah, we knew that already. Okay, nothing new there. Uh, but I should be able to craft these hearts into a full heart. And let's throw the meat steak away. And use this full heart boing, to get myself back up to the five. There we go. The mountain troll that killed me in creating the farm has now been uh, rectified. Now I've completed the farm. I've been rewarded with another life. Another full life back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we're going to leave that. I've done enough grinding of this place for now. I'm glad I've got the buckets. Look, I've been around a long time. I've probably got like 16 months up of protection around these chunks. Uh, which is good. Which is why there's not many mobs spawning. I've been going between the farm and this place as much as possible, really. To uh, keep an eye on the processing, because it's been spring. And also trying to get my bucket, which is awesome. And now I don't really need this uh, water stream down here because I could place actual water streams uh, where I want them to be because I've got buckets, which means I've got the ability to place water, which is immense. And that leads us into the ability to use the Flaxbeard Steam mod as well. Um, there was also mention in the comments about using tubes which is uh, a cool mod that's been added as well. Looks very, very cool and I want to play around with it. It's got item moving and sorting and all sorts in it. I've done a little bit of reading up on it since it was mentioned. Uh, excuse me while I just drink and eat my fill. 
Uh, yeah, I've been having a look at it and reading up on it a little bit, and it looks like a pretty cool thing. What we got? Another reward bag. Some Capoc logs. A wrought iron scythe blade. Ooh. Ooh, wrought iron scythe blade. That sounds cool, doesn't it? We can make a wrought iron scythe. 95 attack damage. Nice. Uh, yeah, better than the things I've been using before, but not the attack damage, the scythe itself. That's cool. I didn't know we could get that. Let's have another look in the reward bag. A death slicer. <laughs> a silk touch. Smite efficiency unbreaking thing. And another full heart. Man, legendary rewards. That just gets better and better. I got a legendary reward bag from a normal reward bag. That's pretty epic. Thank you very much, One Wolf. I love it. Uh, I'm going to put the spare heart in here. As you can see, I've got lots of spare hearts, so I've got plenty of lives. Having plenty of lives makes me happy. Having made this and got that, <laughs> it's a bit weird now. Uh, but this is a silk touch. Um, let's just test it out. Let's see if I can actually use it to silk touch something like grass. Uh, yes. Okay, so I can silk touch grass. Which makes a load of the things that I've been planning to do down here a hell of a lot simpler. But I didn't have these tools when I was planning out what I was going to do. Uh, does that mean that this scythe... Now, yes, the scythe takes bigger chunks of leaves off, which is cool. Does that mean that this silk touch scythe will take blocks of... Uh, well, it gave me a block. The block I silk touched. So not quite what I was kind of expecting hoping for in fact it didn't give me a silk touch on that block at all then so it didn't silk touch any of the leaves okay. that's fine it, it, once i get some shears on presumably i can shear the leaves anyway uh, they've all been growing because i've not been after wood for a long long time everything just grow 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 around here and just leaving it to grow um i've got healthy wood supply it's running down a little bit because i've done another little charcoal pit Done another little charcoal pit because I've been smelting so much stuff in here. I'll show you all that in a bit because we've got tons. Tons smelted up, I tell you. Uh, yeah, fruit trees and all that kind of stuff. All good. Oh, another reward that I got. A brass sheet. Uh, one of the mobs dropped a brass sheet. So that mob farm for mob drops is awesome, I tell you. It's a great, a great thing that I've got going on there. And I need to go and make other mob farms around the place as well. Uh, but right now, I need to get this dirt in place as well. I've only got, I've only got that much dirt, really. I've, oh, I've used so much. I had tons of dirt when I first started leveling this area out. But I suppose I have placed a load more there. And it's farmland, so I've been breaking it and not getting it back. And placed a bit out there. Yeah, okay, so I get it. I have used it all up. So I'm going to have to do another little dirt run a bit later on. Yeah. Well, let's let's get this set up first, because I'm concerned that it's the late spring and I've only got the summer to get another wheat harvest. I did have wheat all the way down here, uh, and I replaced that wheat and that um, farmland with dirt, and I guess that's why I've run out of dirt. Okay, so let's irrigate it by putting it like that way. I'm going to keep it looking nice as well. Let's irrigate it. I'm going to have... a uh, fence there so there we go let's irrigate it like that there are how many types we've got one two three four types of grain that I want to plant in abundance I might also include jute because I got a field of jute here at the minute and it would be good to go all the way down I think actually this maize is this maize uh, a crop that I can use it for as well is it a good idea to have this? Let's see, is it ready? Yeah, this is ready. Maize is a grain. Yes, so I should really have maize in there. So I need it divided into five. Put that maize away in there for now. Need it divided into five. That would be a good thing. So, let's see. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually counted how many I've got here. Good job the grass has grown already. Let's do four gap, four gap. Four, five. Okay, so that doesn't work out the way I wanted it to. 
Um, <laughs> planning. Planning. I'm planning, guys. I'm planning. Let's see. Uh, three. Three. And another three. That's not three, is it? That's three. And three and four again. Yeah. I'm, oh, I missed that one. Dang it. This is why I do these things off camera. Okay, that there, and that there, and then three to there, and then three to there. So that's one, two, three, four. Four sections. Four runs. That'll probably be enough. That'll probably be enough. Four sections of dirt. I've got to gain some more dirt anyway. So I'm just going to uh, place this out all the way up here. And that means that when I want it to go fallow, it's connected to grass. Uh, I will possibly place some side-on blocks every three as well, just to allow the grass to sit there, so that when I do a whole field, I will be able to have it go back to full nutrients as soon as possible. Because I obviously, when I hoe this piece of land here, it'll have no nutrients, because I've just placed it. Whereas this one, I've also just placed, but it's been grassed over. Full nutrients! It's amazing. It's crazy. It's awesome. Okay, right, well, um, let me do a little bit over here, and then we'll get into starting with the Flaxbeard's boiler. Alrighty, well, that's as much as I can do down here for now. Uh, I'll put all the last of my willow wood fences to try and keep it all in keeping. Uh, I know there's some willows where I went exploring, and that's where I got this original willow wood from that I put around a little quarry site that I did a few episodes ago. Uh, so I'll go back there and get some more of that type of wood so that I can uh, mess around with here. I may even have a sapling. May have a, yeah, I've got a couple of willow saplings I can grow, so it'll save me the journey. That'll be good for this. Uh, but basically I've got a couple of little runs that I'm going to put all of my wheat and barley and oats and rice and maize and uh, rice and oats and wheat and <laughs> yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Anything that I find most useful I'll try and do a double batch of. Uh, one other thing that I just noticed, I just went and cleared the cabbage patch and I ended up with two seeds left over after I replanted. So obviously you do get a chance to get extra seeds from the harvest, which is good to know because I thought it was sort of limited to uh, you get back what you ho you get what you sow or something like that. You reap what you sow, baby, reap what you sow. Uh, but this is filling up nicely now and look at all the cabbage I just picked up, loads of the stuff. Uh, I'm eating uh, maize ears. <laughs> I don't know what animals are going to have yet. That's something else that we've got to sort out, including this jute. I want to sort something out with jute. Uh, we've also got all the fruit. Pickings of the fruit. Uh, let's do fruit picking job. Let's do quick fruit picking. Pick all this up. Yeah. And the cherry trees have also harvested or blossomed, should I say. And now there's a, a cherry harvest that I can have from two trees worth of cherries. All of the vinegar in the world can be made out of all this stuff. Um, I just needed the fruit to be growing and mature. Let's see, can I get up in there? How am I going to get to those upper upper cherries? I guess they're falling through. They are falling through, aren't they? Okay, so we'll put all this stuff together. Yep. And pick some more. Look at all the fruit, though. You don't get much per per dose, as it were, per harvest. But at least I'm getting some fruit that I can sort out. Uh, I possibly need to do a lot more than that, though, for it eventually. But, yeah, well, it's okay. I think I might get another harvest. If the last year was anything to go by, then I got a secondary harvest of uh, cherries. Oh, come on. Give me these ones that are up here as well. Some just trapped up here, in there. Yeah, I got him. I got him. I got him. I got you all. I'm gonna have to come up with a cunning plan of how to get these cherries off the tree a lot easier. Harvesting fruit from trees isn't necessarily an easy thing, eh? I didn't consider that when I was planting them. Uh, maybe something I can do later on. If you got any ideas, leave them in the comments. There we go. Let's get that going. Okay. Awesome. Loads of fruit. There's at least a full set of fruit there. And a strawberry as well. Awesome. Okay. I think I already had a strawberry. Yes, I did. And a cherry. Yes, I did. Okay. Let's put virtually full cherries in there. Stack all of that stuff up together and throw it all in the food chest. 
we have got a lot of supplies a lot of supplies from this some uh, this spring and it's only just finished spring early summer so I may get a chance to plant this and harvest it before next winter but time is just flying by now time is flying by let's get a bucket of water before this zombie and minotaur come this way bucket of water in fact let's get two buckets of water ha <laughs> Can't catch me, can't catch me. Oh, that man, that's on a wolf. Okay, maybe you can catch me if I'm not careful. Let's go to sleep so they burn up. Uh, the the idea now is to get Flaxbeard Steam underway. That's what I really want to do next. Get Flaxbeard Steam underway. So let's have my morning breakfast munching of corn. Well, maize. Same sort of difference, isn't it? Something like that. You guys probably know better than me. Don't do a lot of maize over in uh, the UK. Uh, and we're going to need the furnace. This will be a quick bit, hopefully. This will be a, a, a quick little bit as part of the video. And then we can get back to other stuff. I just want to make sure it's working. That's the that's the main thing. The main point is just to check that it actually works. Uh, give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, thank you. So... If I'm right, this is the way to make a boiler, make a boiler, make a boiler. Oh, yes. Okay, and where do we want the boiler? Well, I'm kind of wanting it up in this sort of area around here. I do want one of the bigger boilers at some point, though. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you like what I did with these panels? I don't know if I showed you that I put log panels in there, log piles. This is just a, like a single maple log. Uh, instead of putting the logs in like that, I put a log in like that underneath the window frame. Thought it looked cool. Um, let's let's put it on this section here. Let's just put it there. I'll I'll do something about the base of it and everything soon enough, right? So as I understand it, I got to put some water in it, and I right click with the water bucket to put the water in it. And for some reason, that's been happening quite a lot. Don't know what that is about. Put two buckets of water in it. There we go. So that's up to the two bucket mark. And if I put some charcoal in it, uh, I don't know if it'll burn the charcoal from Terra Firma Punk. Or Terra Firma Craft, should I say. So I'll take a little bit of that, and I'll take a little bit of that. So there's normal Terra Firma Punk, and there's normal Minecraft charcoal. Have a check to see which one actually works in it. Uh huh. Let's see. Try the Terra Firma Craft ones first. Yes, it works in it. That's good. So that'll start boiling up and making some steam for its internal tank. Yes, we're just seeing some there. Will that work alongside it? I think so. I think it, you can put two stacks of it in and it'll just maybe make it faster. It seems to be pretty fast. Could be something to do with the amount of water in it, I suppose. Uh, automating putting the water in. That's another thing entirely. Um, I'm not sure I can do it up here, but we'll see. Now I can maneuver water around. I've got an, an epic, epic bonus from this bucket that I can do all sorts of things. Uh, let's see now. Let's get a valve pipe. And the steam heater for this furnace. I'm not sure if I need to use the steam heater just yet. Let's get a couple of little pipes and a fan. I don't think a fan's going to be any use to me up here, necessarily. I wonder if I can pump steam into a hobbyist steam engine. Hmm, there's something to try that I haven't tested out anywhere else. Okay, so as I recall, now we've got steam in there, that's good. As I recall, you put it on the top. It's got to be on the top, as I recall. Uh, oh, there we go. Turn the valve off. Okay. So steam only comes out the top of these boilers, and rightly so, because that's where steam goes, isn't it? Steam goes up. So I can let the steam escape. <sighs> Awesomely done, yes. Now, let's see. Can I affix a pipe on it like this? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, i got lots of pipes to go all around all over the place. Uh, the further the pipes go, the less pressure there is on the steam and the harder it is to go or something like that anyway okay this is not anything other than a test i don't expect this to work to be honest the hobbyist steam engine can take steam can make steam from buckets of water 
So the bucket also allows me to generate this MJ, which is awesome, which gives me Railcraft uh, MJs or RFs, depending on which way you want to look at it. I want to see now if it actually feeds it steam. Doesn't appear to feed it steam, does it? Now the steam's not going anywhere. No. Okay, so that's not going to happen. That's not going to work. But it's definitely feeding steam out of the pipe. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's see. Can I place this down over here? Get another couple of buckets of water. The issue I've got is not having an infinite water source, I think. Oh, wait a minute. i got a barrel up here. When did the barrel get put up here? Fresh water. That now becomes that. Yes. Okay. And I think if I put something down to put an infinite water source in in and around upstairs, let's, let's do a little brick basin up here. So I've got a kind of an infinite water source up here somewhere. Um, maybe put it in the top here. I think I'm actually going to need to worry about something else in a little while. But for right, right now, I'm going to set this up like this. Uh, maybe half slabs in the front? Half slabs. Yeah, half slabs I think will be better. Let's see if I've got any more... Uh-huh, I've got one, two, I've got some... St uh, yeah, I've got some blocks. Uh, yeah, one, two, three. That'll do me. Okay, I'll pop these down here. I can uh, sort these out a little bit better later. This is just experimentation. Pop you down, pop you down, pop you down. And then put the water in. And I think these buckets should be able to be placeable infinite water sources. Yes, and then I can take infinite water, pop it in steam, take the water, put it in the steam. Oh, yes. We like. So the bucket is amazing. Let's turn the steam valve off. The bucket is absolutely amazing. I am so thrilled with a bucket. Of all things in the world, I am thrilled with a bucket. You notice how that's a bit different, right? I'll right click on that one and it goes on to my bucket stack. When I right click it on that one, it stays in the same slot. It doesn't move stacks. Hmm, interesting. But that's now filled up with fresh water. This, if I take some charcoal out, let's test it with both charcoals again. Let's put this kind of charcoal in. Doesn't appear to like charcoal from Terra Firmacraft. Put this charcoal in. Ah, I know. I've got to put a lever on it, haven't I? Uh, making a lever in Terra Firma Craft. I think it's the same thing, but I've got a lever already. I've actually got some redstone torches, which might work the same. But I've got a lever already. Let's give it a power. Power on, would you? Can you put it on there? Pop that on there, yeah. Let's see. Yes, it can burn the Terra Firma Craft charcoal, so that's good to know. It's good to know that the Terra Firma Craft charcoal goes into either the Flaxbeard Steam or the Railcraft Steam, which is good, very good to know. So now that should start building up in temperature. I'm going to put a little bit more in there and start building up a steam supply ready to produce MJs. What I'm going to do with the MJs and what I'm going to do with the steam, well, <laughs> well, I'm not 100% sure yet. This is sort of like my experimentation into these new, um, well, not new mods, but new adaptations to the terra firma craft that I've only just gotten used to. I've got to figure out what I can possibly use Flaxbeards and Railcraft for other than looking good around my steampunky base. I've got to come up with some cool uses for them. And I'm going to start making and using, utilizing all the things I've got to try and figure out what's the best plan of action. Can I take can I take this water from this infinite water source with the flax uh, with a terra firma craft No, terra firma craft buckets can't take water from vanilla springs. Okay. Well, that's not an issue. That's not a problem. I've now got infinite water. I've now got steam power. I have entered into the age of steam power. And I feel good. That's quite a lot of steam there. I wonder if I could pump that out into a Flaxbeard steam. I wonder if the steam's different kinds of steam. 
Hmm. We shall see, we shall see. I'll experiment a little bit more and I'll let you know a few more details in the very next episode of Terra Firma Punk, part of the Survivor series. See you very soon, guys. Goodbye.